So I understand you guys kind of expect me to binge through shows and get you the review as quickly as possible. And I'll usually do that. But for His Dark Materials, I was like, nope, I'm going to just watch it as I want to and enjoy it. So this review is coming a little late, but it's here and I hope you enjoy. It's not always about the algorithm. Sometimes I gotta just do one for me. Same thing with the book I'm currently reading, Sword of Kagan. I'm taking it slow because it's really good and I wanna just, I wanna just enjoy it. Not get through it as quickly as possible. Just, just enjoy the book. But the show is here and season one is done. His Dark Materials has been adapted once again. And the big question on everyone's mind who loves the series is does this new show do better justice to the source material than the movie that came out, I think 2007? And the answer is yes by far, leaps and bounds better than that movie did, especially with that movie's cowardice in terms of bowing down and not actually bringing forth the themes from Philip Pullman's His Dark Materials to the front and just instead trying to tell the story without them, which did not work at all. Fortunately, this new BBC adaptation has not failed on that account. I don't think by any measure. They haven't done a perfect job, but no, they're not failing to realize the original source material's themes, which for me, honestly, was the biggest concern going in. I know this may be controversial because it's a fairly anti-organized religion theme that goes throughout his dark materials, but when it comes to adapting any book, I believe in trying to capture the author's original message, and I think they've done that here. But before we get into that stuff too heavily, let's go over the more just surface level value. Uh, is it good or not things within the show, starting with the acting. Lyra's acting is outstanding. I think this girl, while she has weaker moments for such a young actor, has truly brought this character to life. Daphne Keene is phenomenal, and I would not pick any other actor within her age range to take on that character. In fact, most of the child actors, I'm eating my words for speaking out against child actors for so long, did a very good job. I don't think there was a really weak performance among any of the younger characters cast, I'm happy to say. Though one did bother me. One bothered me a lot. Before I say this, I like Lin-Manuel Miranda. The guy's clearly a genius. He wrote Hamilton, one of the best plays, musicals I've ever seen. But his acting grated on me like steel wool toilet paper, man. Oh, I could not take it. He just doesn't fit the character, the role. He stands out and is not lost in the performance at all. So that was the weakest point of this entire show for me, was any time Lin-Manuel Miranda was on screen acting. I really hate to say it, but I can't lie. Uh, I And I, I do like the guy. He seems very genuine and nice, and acting is something that you can improve on. But for me personally, and I'm feel free to disagree with me, everyone interprets acting differently, but I could not stand his character in this show. Never at any point did I feel like he was completely lost in that role. It just felt like Lin-Manuel Miranda doing a caricature and didn't like it. Not even a little bit, not even for a minute or two, not even for a second. I hope I'm strong. And as much as I didn't like Lin-Manuel Miranda's acting, I actually loved the actress who played Mrs. Coulter. She is the definitive representation of that character for me for now and forever. The same way that Henry Cavill is now being called the face of Witcher, I think she will be Miss Coulter because holy God, does she embody that crazy yet passionate brilliance Mwah, beautifully. Uh, best performance of the show, in my opinion, while I love Daphne and Keen's Lyra, in terms of just overall acting quality, she even outshined James McAvoy to me, and I love James McAvoy. I think he's one of the best actors currently working, but he didn't have nearly the same amount of screen time in every instance of her being in camera. She just stole the show to me, just beginning to end, loved that performance. Tell me where the alethiometer is. I will destroy all of this. But for that being my weakest point of the entire show, I'm actually really positive on pretty much the rest of the show here. There were weaker episodes, but it never completely fell apart. I thought the look of the show was very good. Uh, it didn't look cheap in any way. While there were weak VFX moments, overall, I thought the demons looked quite nice. The bears looked outstanding. And I realized that bringing a full creature to life in CGI is very difficult. And they did a wonderful job, especially with this uh, 
TV show adaptation coming from BBC, which doesn't typically have the budget of a Netflix or something along those lines, at least not that I'm aware of. And while the look maintained a high quality to me, except for a few shots, but not many, and they weren't even that bad, the tone was also very well realized. It felt creepy and dark, while not going overly so. At no point did it ever feel like it was encroaching on horror territory, but you are definitely experiencing a story where children are being abused in awful, awful ways, and it's not blunted at all. They walked a fine line there, and to me, to great success. I do want to also point out that His Dark Materials currently has a incredibly balanced score on Rotten Tomatoes, and if you look across online, pretty much everyone's putting it in this same ballpark. Meanwhile, we have Witcher, which has one of the most split scores I've ever seen. And finally, we have Mandalorian, the only other show I reviewed here that is very well reviewed and somewhat consistent between audiences and critics. I'd say very consistent as well. But His Dark Materials currently is actually tied. It seems that people are just in consensus that this is really good. Pips is making noise. Now let's get back to this question of did it do the source material, His Dark Materials, the books, right there, justice. I think in terms of the themes, yes. I don't think many people will argue with that. While the Magisterium doesn't feel quite as directly compared to our own real world in this show, they didn't back down completely. It is still definitely maintaining those ideas of independence from you know, religious authority and et cetera, et cetera, organized religions, evils, all these things. And it didn't back down compared to the 2007, I'm, I'm gonna maintain, I think that's the date movie, is just in a whole other league because while this one may have softened a couple punches a little bit, that movie didn't even throw a single hit. It just gave up and never even started out the gate. So that's a low bar to beat. But not even considering that low bar, I still feel this did do a good job. The most prime example, without getting into spoilers, but talking about the very end, the movie refused to adapt the actual ending of the book. They apparently filmed it, but didn't put it in. This TV show does embrace the actual ending from His Dark Materials, at least the first book, The Golden Compass. It it does not back down, it brings that scene to life. And I was very happy to see that because I understand how you'd want to try to censor that or pull away. And seeing them not just to me told me, okay, this show is willing to have that conversation. And that gets a respect nod from me. There are changes made from the source material, but overall this is more true to the books than I think the recent Witcher show was. It's more true to the books than a lot of things I've seen adapted over the years. It's in the upper echelon of no, we're just telling this story through this new medium. And every change they did make, I at least somewhat understand why it's happening. That being said, there is a fairly large instance of something from the second book that is pulled into the first here. And it threw off the pacing a smidge, and it felt a slight bit out of place without getting into spoilers, but it's involving a whole new character and a whole new setting. But it wasn't bad, and it was interesting enough that even though it was a bit jarring to suddenly go over here, I still enjoyed it. So there are negatives here, one performance in particular, but nothing completely breaking the show. The rest of my criticisms are mostly nitpicks. I really wanted more demons on screen. I feel like when they're there, they look great and they're nice and they add a lot of personality to the show, but they're not as prevalent as they are in the books. That's actually probably the biggest divergence from source material in terms of just what I was noticing the most. I want the demons to be prevalent, but they've flat out admitted that they're not there a lot because it's expensive so they're just kind of minimizing their presence and that sucks. I wanted Lyra's demon to have a lot more personality and presence on screen but still he just maintains this more minor role occasionally speaking having a bit of personality especially more towards the end but not nearly being the pan we get in the book. Not even close. But that one is so just constrained by something out of the showrunner's control that I, I can't blame them entirely. I also do want to add I feel the show is a lot stronger in its latter half the first half is still good and engaging, but it definitely kicks it up a notch as the season begins to wind down, and that's where I started feeling a lot more positive overall on this adaptation of The Golden Compass. I'm hopeful for the next season. I hope they'll be given a bigger budget, and I hope they're able to continue down this path of staying very loyal to the source material, at least in every regard I see up to this point. I'm giving the His Dark Materials TV show a 7.2 out of 10. Let me know what you thought of this BBC adaptation of the Philip Pullman classic. Like and subscribe if you have not already. Hit the Patreon if you want to support what I do here. Check out the merch if you want to support the channel here and represent what we do for the fantasy genre. And have a good one, y'all. Peace.
And of course, I want to record a special shout out to my latest high tier Patreons. Pratik Jivanji, I hope I said that right. April Love Lance and Simon. You have a capital N, so I had to hit the N hard. So it's, it's Simon. Is that, I hope that's how you prefer it said. Thank you guys so much for the support and I hope you guys uh, enjoy his dark materials.